I'll see you guys in the dark. So I had known this woman since before I could remember. She was really good friends with my mom and dad through high school, so I already knew her before all of this. Unfortunately, my mother was an alcoholic and a pill addict, which led to pretty bad neglect for several years when I was very young. After missing most of my third grade year, DCS got involved and my dad got custody of me. He was dating my stepmother at the time, and at first everything was fairly normal. She was like an older sister. Friend, to be exact. It wasn't too long before I noticed things started to change. One day, when I was about nine... I was sitting in the living room floor, playing with my back against the couch. Stepmother crossed the living room to go down the hallway, and, as she did, seemed to shoulder check the doorway. As soon as she did this, she turned around and started yelling at me, accusing me of pushing her. I stared at her dumbfounded because I hadn't moved from my spot in the floor. She continued yelling and accusing me as I tried to rationalize it in my head. Maybe I got up and don't remember? But why would I push her? I really had no negative feelings towards her at this point, so it didn't make any sense to me. But she was an adult, and I was a child. Surely she knew what she was talking about. Stepmother was a taller, skinny woman with long, golden blonde hair, straightened through the length with those poofy 80s bangs on top. She typically wore high-waisted jeans and kept long, pristine red nails that would end up being a horrifying symbol to me in my teen years. Things only got worse as I got older. I would speak to my mom on occasion over the phone, or in a letter the first few years. But each time I did, stepmother would become more and more hostile towards me, claiming that my contact with my mother was making me misbehave. But I was always an introvert. I loved reading and school, and I was a bit of a nerd, and hated getting into trouble. So this accusation didn't make sense to me, even then. But what could I do about it? Before too long, I noticed that stepmother looked for any opportunity along with me to me however she wanted. Stepmother became extremely militant. Each morning she woke up for school by bursting into my room, aggressively jerking the covers from my body. Some mornings, even grabbing my feet, digging her nails in and twisting my toes. I was expecting to follow a strict schedule on school mornings. 6.15, get out of bed. 6.25, get dressed for school get breakfast. At this time I was expected to stand in the exact center point of the threshold between the kitchen and the dining room, ready to take my breakfast and sit in my spot at the table. 6.35, be done with breakfast. By 6.45, finish getting ready for school. Be sitting Indian style in the center of the living room, waiting on everybody to be ready. If I did not follow the schedule down to the minute, punishment would be doled out. She would grab my hands on taking my breakfast twisting one or two fingers out of the socket, pulling me close to grit through her teeth. She stared at me, glaring hateful eyes. Sometimes she would step in, polluting my feet, grinding her heels into my bare skin, twisting and glaring hate into me. On a few occasions, she even broke my wood hairbrushes across my face, leaving busted blood vessels and massive bruises. When the damage was too obvious, she would try to hide me for a day or so, gently waking me the next morning acting as though I was sick and telling me that I was too ill to go to school, brushing my hair back and telling me to go back to sleep. This treatment rolled over into my days after school and would evolve into more aggressive behaviors. She made sure to conceal any sign of mistreatment from my father, but still some happened right under his nose. At the dinner table, she would dig her toes into my leg and scrape so hard that she would shave off chunks of skin from my skins with her toenails. Even at church, placing what looked like an affectionate hand on my back, but would proceed by giving me an extremely painful and deep pinch on my back, leaving huge bruises in their place that no one else could see. I was given an hour and a half after school each day to do my homework. After that, I was expected to go to our playroom where I was to entertain her daughter. Stepmother's daughter was between five and seven when things started to get really bad. I was expected to play what she wanted, when she wanted, and abide by any requests made. This was never said, but understood, and later learned the hard way. One day during the summer, while eating lunch with her daughter in the playroom, she asked me to open her dessert. She had a kid cuisine that she had merely taken all of but two bites of. 
Stepmother would typically leave the plastic on her dessert as a system to encourage her to eat her dinner first. Of course, when she asked me to open it, I asked her if she was done eating her meal, passively addressing the fact that she had barely touched it. I was about 14 at the time, and it seemed like a plausible thing to do. When I didn't give her what she wanted, she got up in a huff to go tattle to her mother, as most six-year-olds would do. Stepmother was immediately enraged and barreled down the hallway in my direction. I don't even think I was out of view of her daughter when she grabbed me by the hair and started dragging me. I tried to keep up, but lost my balance and fell to the floor as she continued to drag me down the hallway by my hair. Once we reached the bedroom, she started kicking me in the stomach and then pulled me to my feet. She then began rummaging through her belt drawer and pulled out a woven leather belt. She had already used more than once and then proceeded to beat me with the belt, starting with my shoulder blades all the way down to my ankles. Heaven forbid if I screamed, she would do it more. Abuse did not stop with physical, as she seemed to get a kick out of bullying me. This she wasn't so worried about hiding from my father, as she would make it seem lighthearted and juvenile when he was around. One evening, while having a family dinner at one of our local go-to sit-downs, she started kicking me under the table, passing me horrible evil glares. After a few minutes of this, she spoke up. You chew like a cow, haha. Why can't you chew right? Doesn't she chew like a cow? My dad chuckled, thinking it was just meant to be lightheartedly. But as he looked down at his meal again, her death glare staring a hole through me with a tight jaw and grit teeth told me otherwise. This became a new target for her abuse. I did this again later when she noticed that I walked on the inside of my house shoes. One day, kicking me in the back of the knees, making me fall to the floor. She began kicking me in the back, knocking the wind out of me all simply over the way I walked. This became my daily life. Speaking out seemed ridiculous because all of these punishments just felt so absurd. I didn't tell anyone for a long time, but as I got older, people around me got wiser. When I was in middle school, my dad and stepmom were called in for questioning by the school. Two of my teachers were highly suspicious of my bruises and constantly swollen fingers. Stepmother proceeded to put on an act, crying and acting hurt in shock that they would think that she would hurt a child. I changed schools after that year. Things only got worse once I went to high school, as she seemed intimidated by my aging and gaining maturity. Male friends were off limits, and my curves were to be hidden in horrible, unflattering clothes. I didn't really mind so much, as I really had very little interest in boys, or displaying my womanhood to any degree. However, one afternoon, while taking a shower, she burst in the bathroom to remind me of my timing. As she wept the bathtub curtain open, she saw the hair growing below my waist. Before I could react, she grabbed the hair and jerked it down, pulling out a handful of my hair. She cursed me for not telling her that I had started maturing in that way. I couldn't tell anyone about that for years. After the belt, however, stepmother's sister-in-law saw my backside and called my dad at work, cursing him and threatening to report it. I started going to her house on the weekends after that. After this, I got braver and became less scared. Once I saw people reacting to what little they saw of my stepmother's behavior, I knew I was in the right for sticking up for myself. So I did, in subtle ways at first. I brought jewelry and makeup to school and started to give myself space to express myself. Then one morning, while running a minute or two behind on breakfast, stepmother came to the kitchen in a rage. I was not I finished getting ready for school. Before I could have turned around from rinsing my dishes, she was rummaging in the utensil drawer and pulled out a fork. She backed me against the kitchen counter, pressing the fork to my throat. I don't remember what she said to me in those moments, but I remember her hot breath in my ear, hissing through her teeth at me, and I remember the chill of the cold metal prongs to my throat. I was only 16 at the time. My last day there was a field day of my junior year. I decided to wear a cute outfit that her sister-in-law had bought me for casual days a cute cap sleeve striped t-shirt, cute femininely to suit my curves with long matching shorts. I knew she wouldn't like it, but I also knew that it was completely appropriate for a girl my age, even very conservative in comparison to my other peers. She saw me as I was walking down the hallway towards my bedroom, and I saw the rage fill her. She came at me nails first, grabbing my arms and dug her nails in. This was when I snapped and fought her off, shoved her into a wall. Rage filled me as I went to the living room to grab my phone, 
If you touch me again, I'm going to call the cops. She went pale, and suddenly I wasn't scared for myself anymore. I couldn't control myself, and I laughed. You're scared, I said, suddenly enlightened. Her face went blank as she walked towards me. If I have to make your dad choose between you and me, it's not going to be you, she said coldly. I ignored this, because I knew she was delusional to think something like that. I went to my bedroom and packed a bag. She didn't stop me, but she did make sure to let me know that if I left, I wasn't welcome back. I ended up spending that summer in Florida with my stepmother's sister-in-law, and moved in with my grandmother for the next several years. I only saw stepmother once in my 20s. She had left my dad by the time I was out of high school for the man she had been cheating on him with. She and I spoke briefly over Facebook in that next year, and I confronted her about what she put me and my dad through. Her response? I'm sorry if you felt unloved. I was just really stressed. And you were a pretty rebellious kid. I kind of find this funny, but it is what it is. I'm female, and this happened last year when I was 24 years old. I was visiting my mom. My neighborhood is known for being safe, or at least that's what my family thought. We've got problems with neighbors on both sides of our house. We live in a small town that has been growing due to the university that was built in there. My mom lives across the street from the university because she teaches there. Our house has two floors, and my room is on the second floor. The window is right on the front of our house, so you can see the street from it. Every night around midnight, when I was going to sleep, I heard the dogs barking and growling. Whenever I went to the window to see why they are barking, I couldn't see a thing. There was a lot of trees and bushes in front of our house, so maybe that was what was making them bark. This went on for at least a week, and it was always at midnight. This night, I was having trouble sleeping, so I was video chatting with my boyfriend. At midnight, my dogs were barking like crazy. I was sitting right in front of my window and couldn't see anything as usual, but I felt a weird vibe. Like I was about to discover what was hiding on my front yard and scaring my dogs. I turn off the lights and stay still, watching the street in a placement of that those who were outside couldn't see me. My boyfriend was still chatting with me, saying that maybe it was a fox or a raccoon because there's a lot of wildlife around where my mom lives but I knew it wasn't an animal. I stayed there for a long time. My boyfriend went to sleep, and I kept looking at the window. It was about 1.30 a.m. when I could see something moving from the bushes. It was a man wearing all black, crouched right behind the bushes. My body froze, and I didn't call my mom to see it. I've already told her about my dogs going crazy in our front yard at the same time every single night. But like my boyfriend, she said maybe it was just an animal. So I was there looking at him, and he couldn't see me. He started moving, but still was bent over so no one could see him. But as I was on the second floor, so I could see him just fine. He crawled with his back right next to our fence until he reached the neighbor's gate. Right inside that gate was a car parked. What happened next was really fast. He lit up a Molotov cocktail and tossed it in the car. That went up in flames like crazy, and I finally called my mom to see what was happening. He ran away like a feral cat, so fast down the street. My mom was calling the police, and then the fireman. But as I got there, the man was long gone. The next day, my mom got a call from the police officer that came the night before, telling her that they arrested the man that did that. He was trying to convince his ex-wife, who was our neighbor, to get back to him. He said he would make things worse if she didn't get back with him. After that, she moved out in a week. We really never talked to her, so I don't know any more details. I'm happy that he got arrested. I'm sad I only managed to do something after he set her car on fire. Me and my ex were together for two months, and within that time, he stole money from me and blamed it on me when I asked him about it. We broke up after I went for some advice. I would go to college for most of the day, go to my work, go home, and do homework then repeat. I was at my job, doing my job, and I get an alert on my phone. I figured that I would watch the cameras after I get home, and so, over the last two hours, I got three more alerts, and as I was taking the bus back to my home, I watched the cameras, and I watched my ex take a hammer to my back door. 
and kept on watching as he struggled against the deadbolt, and then I saw him enter. I called the police faster than I thought I could, and told them that there was a break-in at my address. I continued to watch the video after that. Fifteen minutes after he entered, he left with a duffel bag. I arrived back to my house to see that the police had beat me. I identified myself as a homeowner, and went inside to check the damages. The place was trashed, along with my duffel bag, and some jewelry was missing. I gave the police the evidence that it was my ex, and I gave them the place that he was crashing at. I then called to put a restraining order against him, along with to replace the deadbolt. Not long after they caught him at a pawn shop, he was trying to get back at me for dumping him. I am now happy that the restraining order is in place, along with my ex in jail for years, for breaking and entering. So ex, you really need to leave me alone and never see me again. So preface to this. I was young, maybe 18 or 19, and had no idea what we were getting into. So my father owns three businesses, and was actively dating his business partner, and was providing for her. She also made advances on me, which kind of creeped me out. She would buy us all food, and at first I was grateful. But then I started becoming nervous, as she wanted to be alone with me a lot. My father ended up getting married, but didn't tell her. She got really upset at him told me not to tell her about it. She came to my job and demanded to see my father, to which I told her he wasn't here. She screamed at me and said that we would soon regret it. Due to the disturbing nature of it, I called the cops, and all they did was take my name, but didn't actually look into it. So fast forward. I came home around 12 at midnight, as I had just come home from my second job, dead tired from school and work. I ate and crashed on my bed. It had to be at least three in the morning when I heard my door open. At first I didn't move because I assumed it was my calico cat, Misty, pawing at my door, as she likes to sleep with me. When I groaned her name and she didn't answer, it struck me strange, but I wasn't worried until I felt a presence standing over me. I quickly woke up and discovered my father's ex in our house above me crazy-eyed. She was screaming, saying how she would get her revenge on my father. I quickly rolled out of bed ran past her, and called the authorities. She openly tried to fight my father's wife and tried to stab my dad. The police came and arrested her on the spot. That was the scariest shit that I've ever been through, and I'm glad that I won't see her again. Now I sleep with a blade next to my bed and a taser. Please be careful, as you never know who may pay you a late-night visit. Very soon my dad's about to go and get a restraining order on this lady. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.